Hey guys, my name is John Silva. Today we're gonna create some Photoshop brushes. We're gonna try to make them as unique as possible and have fun. Honestly, it's all about exploration. There's no specific way of doing it. There's only the start. You gotta do it like everybody else, but aside from that, uh, we can try and, and have some fun with brushes. So the first thing before doing any brush is think what kind of brush do we want and what's the use of it. So we can start with something simple. Uh, everybody loves like painterly, strokey kind of brushes, uh, like hairy brushes, you know. So let's try and do that. Uh, the first thing though you got to keep in mind is the size of your canvas. The size of my canvas is 1470 by 1080. It can be any size you want as long as it's above, I usually recommend above 500 uh, pixels. And that's about it. Now the second thing you gotta know is that white equals transparency and the more darker the color goes or value goes in your brush, the, um, the less transparency it gets. So for example, right now I got this kind of mid gray, right? So that would indicate that it's telling Photoshop that it's half transparent as opposed to your black, which is gonna when, you, when you're going to paint with a brush, it's telling Photoshop that it's full opaque. So, with that in mind, let's create, the, yeah, that hairy brush that we are talking about. Um, I'm going to try to do something different from the other brushes that I have. Um, know that this is a trial and error thing. Always, you always keep experimenting, doing new things and editing over and over again. And that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to... I didn't prepare anything. I'm just going to go with the flow and make up something, right? So let's see how this is going to look like. Get a different eraser. Now I want full opaque. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to go for many grays here. Let's see how this... Um, no, actually, let's erase that. I thought of a better, better shape. I'm just kind of letting my hand go and do what it wants. Of course, I'm making the brush much bigger now, because also I realized that it wasn't big enough to make it very, very sharp. Okay, for now, let's just try try with this, right? Now we go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and have a sample, we can name it Harry, very wizard Harry. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> once you once you click on that, uh, you have an imprint of what you just created. Right now, it has no settings. No matter how hard or light I press, that is gonna be created. Now, we're gonna set a new layer because we don't want to destroy what we have right there because we might need it. And um, we're gonna open up. The brush presets uh, presets. So you can click on F5 and it's gonna open, or you can go to I believe it's in Window and Brush. Window Brush. Click in there and you can turn it off and turn it on through there. Um, okay. First things first. Brush tip shape. You can adjust the space. No, the spacing is very important to me. Um, for now, 
the less spacing there is, the more smooth it's gonna look like because each imprint, each each time the brush, um, the Wacom tablet picks up, and it kind of keeps multiplying that. And the the more you have the the more you have space, the less imprinting there's gonna be. The for the faster the brush is gonna be as well. Now, if you leave barely any spacing, you might experience some lag. Like if you notice, there's a slight lag in comparison to if I leave the spacing just I don't know 10% maybe, and now it's super fast, right? Um, but I still want a little bit more spacing, and we're gonna go with shape dynamics. Now, a lot of these. It's experimenting. I could stay here and, uh, I don't know, do a video for two hours and you'll still find new things all the time. I keep creating brushes and I always find new things and new ways of, of creating brushes. So experiment. Don't be afraid of clicking every single little button and just move things back and forth and see what they do. Um, so right now, once I turned on the shape dynamics by default, these are the presets, everything on 0% and the control is on pen pressure. What that's happening is that when I press down, it goes thinner, I mean when I press down it goes thicker and then when I let go of my uh, brush it goes thinner. Now how much of that do I want? Not too much. So if I press hard, yeah I want a little change to it. But not like, I don't want it to be like super thin and then BAM, it explodes. I don't want that. So, as you can see, already the effect. It's already a pretty cool brush, but you're noticing that there's no blending. Uh, and that's due to transfer. The transfer, I'm using Photoshop CS6. Where it says transfer, if you have older versions, I believe CS5 and four are, are already different. So here might say something different, but it's still exactly the same thing, only the name changed. Um, so once I press transfer, by default, now when I press hard, and when I press light, you can see how opaque the brush is. So you can go from very little paint to a nice amount of paint. There's no transparency. Now, how much of that actually do I want? And what is this opacity cheater? So this is basically modifying. You can see you can see like down here the changes. You have Photoshop CS6. Older versions don't have that, but it gives gives a randomized uh, opacity um, changes. I can give a little bit of that, right? And the control is basically stating if I have to really press hard or not to get an opaque brush. Now I want it. I wanted to make it easy for my wrist. Therefore, I tend to press light lightly anyway, and I want to gain my pen pressure quite quite easily without having to press down very very hard. About a seventy percent. Yeah, that that that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're getting somewhere. Uh, flow jitter. Nope. And this the same thing. Uh, let's go back. Now you can mess with this if you want it to be all crazy and round and stuff, but I don't want. But Honestly, like now that I turn this on, this would be like a very nice sponge effect. If you, in traditional, if you grab a sponge and you dip it in in uh, ink or whatever, you you'd have a similar effect as this, as you keep dabbing it. Um, but that's not what we want. We want the that. Uh, this could be also like a nice scale brush when you paint over some. Some, um, you know, for texture, some lizards or something. Now, scattering, we don't want any scattering. Texture, mm, 
No. Texture tends to be very heavy, and I want to make light brushes that everybody can use, and there's no lag whatsoever. Now, what I do want is a little bit of color dynamics. And what does this do? Color dynamics, it change. well, it's what it says. It, change, it changes the dynamics of the color. So per brush stroke, it can change either the hue, saturation, brightness, the purity of the color, or everything at once, right? So right now, let's say I want only the brightness. I don't want it to affect my colors. Now, if you notice, I'm going to put these three, three a lot so you can notice the difference. You see this kind of dotted or light and dark uh, effect? No matter how hard I press gently or or very hard it's the effect is there regardless now we want that but just a, a tiny little variation to make it more what you call it um we don't want it to be too controlling because the traditional mediums can be very very chaotic in a good way right very unpredictable that's the word i was looking for and we want a little bit of that. I don't know if you can even tell, but just a little bit, if I keep going like that, you see those lighter areas, like there would be a little bit of texture in there. That's what we want. Now, if, we choose, if I choose a different color, the, the exact same thing is going to happen. Maybe even you'll see even better. Now, you see what's happening in there? That's, that's what we want. Maybe actually uh, brightness a little bit... 1% less so when we start painting right let's do a little little red ball here for example to show how this you know you gotta test it out now I, I like just this is very simple but I like how three-dimensional it feels when we get close it seems like there's a thickness to it and that's one of the hardest things to capture in digital is thickness of paint because obviously it's just pixels, right? Um, so I can I can just paint with this. Now I'm noticing I, I like it when I paint within the shape, but the silhouette. Do you see this? Like there, it it does a bumpy, it makes a bumpy shape. I don't want that when my brush is big. I mean, I could make my brush smaller, get in there, and uh, fix it. But I feel like if I would turn the shape, going back to shape dynamics, I could make it... Mm, no, I'm sorry, not shape dynamics, brush tip. I could make the pacing just a little less. Is 10% enough? Let's see. Now, it is better. It's still kind of... Look, it has this like wobbly, bumpy shape, but it's much better than than uh, before. Let's see if I do five percent. I don't want to get to one. You you want to usually avoid one percent because that makes your with texture brushes it makes your brush really laggy. Uh, let's say oh there you go. So now we have a nice smooth. Uh, there's still a little bit of texture in there thanks to. There's the dot. I could always delete that one dot. Um, let's make one more ball. Different color. This really quickly. Go over and... So, hmm, I feel like the transfer a bit could be now that I I change now that I minimized the spacing, it it feels like I'm not able to blend as much. So we lower down the on transfer we lower down the control to about four percent, and now I'm I'm able to. Hmm, let's see. Now because I changed it, it looks a little bit more. Transparent, don't you guys think? So trial and error always, always change and try new things, but know 
that uh that it might be for good or for bad. Now I like this one better. I don't like the edge. What I'm gonna do though is with one brush make two brushes basically. So we have this one. I'm gonna save it and call it Harry Smooth because oops sorry because that's that, that's what, what's happening. It's just smooth hairy brush. Maybe maybe a little bit watercolory. Have well, not really. There's a transparency to it. But we're gonna go back to actually how we had our spacing. Like so. It's less seeing fourteen percent enough. It looks like. Okay. So now we have two brushes out of one. You can use one the soft one to build up forms and the texture one. Let's save it. So you save it by on the the brush panel. Here at the very bottom there's a little square uh, like it looks like folded paper or something and we're gonna name it Harry Texture. Right. Um you can always set capture brush size in preset. Basically that means when you pick up the brush, it's gonna gonna change it to the size that you have currently. So if I have this, if I make it bigger, but then go to the brush that I created right here, it's gonna change the size back to to what it was saved in. So let's see. Um, just out of that we have two brushes. We can just keep going with this. Um, let's erase. And we can even use the same same brush. Let's change this up. And I'm just doing a selection, not knowing what what kind of effect it's gonna have. Um, I do want a textured brush for dirt, for example. I'm just thinking of things that are, you know, we usually paint. So for effects, I'm gonna add some kind of dirt. Raising this. That. The. And even add a little bit of gray. So you see this gray is gonna when I'll be painting, it's gonna paint with transparency by default. I want just a little bit here and there, even if it doesn't make too much sense. I'm gonna select again and cut it here. Alright. Oops. Let's do another selection. I want this closer and erase some of these random ones here. And the last thing, just pick up a very hard brush. I'm going to do a little, little speckly dots. All right. Cut a little bit here in the middle because I know. I know that's gonna make it a little bit too thick. The speckles a little bit too thick. Go. Okay. Now same thing. Go to edit. Edit. And define brush preset. So now in speckle or dust, dust effects. Ever. And again, this is how it how it becomes. Now on a new layer, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the spacing a little bit further away. So when I paint, there's a row. So when I paint, there's a row of exactly brush marks. Uh, now. Do I want shape dynamics? Do you want it to randomize the size? That's our question. I guess that 
that yes, we can have a control of how thin and how thick it is, but just a, just a little bit, not too much. I I don't like it to have it have too much of a difference. And uh, we can change the angle of it. So with the pressure, it's gonna angle it. So it becomes already a bit more randomized. Size jitter, uh, yeah, we can change it a little bit too. Not too much of a difference. Roundness jitter, yeah, some of them look squishy, others don't. That's all right. That's all right. Scattering. Now here's a good one. The scatter and the take. Let's raise the count and play with it. So we want the, f the a dirt effect, uh, the dirt effects. <laughs> so when you paint the rain, let's let's try it out how it is right now. Oh wait, before we actually do that, we need the transfer because we need that opacity, right? So if we paint, try to paint some dirt here. And again, this is just for the effects. I'm gonna do like a dirt slab or whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can raise or minimize how big it is. So we have a nice. It looks dirt. It, it looks dirty. And I uh, feel like we accomplished what we're after. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that this w this is like it would be a thick dirt you know like when when you wet it and it becomes kind of thick and crackly i really like that but i feel like we can have i feel uh, but i feel like we can have a a different one a more thinner more speckly kind of brush um could add some texture brush, some texture to make it a little bit thinner. Let me select this. So just by uh, clicking on the texture and selecting this kind of what you call it noisy texture, it's gonna turn what we have into finer. Uh, now we can raise the contrast. Let, let's see. Let's play with this a little bit. Depth change. Now here, here as I keep going, it has better build up. So you see, I can. It still has a little bit of those big chunks, and we we're gonna change that. But I kind of like this this setting, so we'll keep this in mind. And. Uh, did we save this? Let me texture. Okay. Save this and let's write it. Uh, dust. If maybe instead of dust, dirt, dirt effects, and then the second one is gonna be dust. Uh, dust effect. Uh, dirt effects, and now. We're going to hide this, go back to our original one, and now I can already see which which ones uh, made, which parts of this brush made it to be uh, large chunks. So I'm going to grab a, you can grab other texture brushes, or you can, even the, the brush that I just created, I can use it with my... Is it with my uh, eraser? What we're gonna do. Gonna break apart those areas, and actually, I need a little bit more opaque brush. Back to our round brush. Gonna dot it around. Break up those 
triangle shapes. Now we're gonna have to bring some some of that speckly um, some of that speckly uh, brush strokes in the middle. Break it apart a little bit more. I feel like this would be enough. Now, let me just change my brush into take one, the same one, and add a couple of bit more dots. Yep. Well, let's see how this goes. Edit, uh, define brush preset. We don't actually we don't have to name it now. We'll name it once we're done with all the settings. Uh shape dynamics. Oops. Sorry, br I mean brush tip shape. Make the spacing larger. Shape dynamics. Minimum mi uh, minimum di diameter, I don't know, around 70s. And the angle change. Uh, we're not going to touch the roundness here. Now scattering. Now we now we have a finer, finer uh, brush. Oops. Let me change the spacing. There we go. Changing the count basically means how much is it multiplying, you know? If I want a more dusty kind of uh, erase this. So what's going on? But now the problem is that the transfer is off. So now we can gently have some of that dust going on. Um, I feel like this is a little bit too thick, to be honest with you guys. So, before we end up our video here, we're gonna save this. Save it. Let's right click, click, dust, dusty, X. All right, and. And actually, grab again our opaque brush and do just a couple, just a couple dots. Very simple. In a kind of roundish shape. All right, let's try this. Edit. Find brush preset. Doesn't matter right now. I have to name it, do layer, and uh, set our spacing a little higher. Set our transfer so that we can have opacity. Shape dynamics. Mm, for now, we'll leave the shape dynamics alone. Let's go to scattering. Very important. See how we can scatter. Oh. Ah, uh, there you go. Now we're getting closer to what we want. Do we want a lot of them? Do we want just like very few dust speckles? It's really up to you. Um, I'm gonna go with just a little bit. I want I want to be able to get in there and just like tap it and have it change. Now it's not changing enough. We're gonna go to shape dynamics. Again, minimum diameter around the 70s. And the angle is what I want to change. Looking at the preview right there. And I, because we don't want it to be too repetitive, we want it to be more random. Now I can change sizes. And it's going to look cool. Now the roundness. Change too much. Mm, size jitter. 
doesn't change too much to be honest with you. What happens if we add really quickly texture? What can we do with this? Change the scale. So basically this is changing the scale of the photo or not photo but the texture that we picked up from there. And it basically makes that either bigger or smaller when it's applied to the brush. Brightness, bright. And it's doing very little changes, but everything counts. So there you go, you have a crackly brush. It could be even blood uh, spray, when blood sprays on on the wall or something. And if you want to make this brush a little bit thicker, you just go to scattering and put the count higher. And you have like, bam, you know? It's actually pretty nice. We're gonna save that. Now, one thing you notice is that we can save uh, two, three brushes just with one creation, just by changing the brush preset. So we're gonna be here. Fine. Dusty X. There you go. So yeah, guys. Uh, I hope that helped, and you learn how to create some cool, interesting brushes quite easily. To be honest, if you like what you're seeing, and you want more of this, maybe more different brush creations, because there's there's so much we can do. Uh, yeah, just leave a comment, like, anything to show your support towards us. So yeah, thank you guys for coming and see you.